Today, we're going to talk about 14 different approaches you can use to help you understand the Bible in ways you never thought possible. Let's get started. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for taking a moment to check out this video. Before we get started, please take a second to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because we are participating in an experiment to see if we can grow this channel to 1 million subscribers in just one year. We want to demonstrate to the world that we're serious about our faith, we're serious about studying scripture, and we are preparing ourselves for testifying and witnessing and sharing Jesus Christ to anyone we may come in contact with in this this world. So please take a moment to support by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And before we get into this, I want to thank some of our viewers for leaving comments and sharing the content. You are helping us break the algorithm and you are giving us ideas that we can share on on this platform. We'll be discussing things every single day. Videos will be posted every single day and we're going to eventually touch the topics that you're raising in the comment box. So thank you so much for your support. Now we're going to talk about 14 different approaches that you can use in studying the Bible. Every scripture that we read should help us understand or even help us see Jesus clearly. In fact, Jesus helps us understand why we should study the Bible. In John chapter 5, verse 39, he says, You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. But the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. So the idea that we have in studying the Bible is that the more we study the Bible, the more we see Jesus. And the more we see Jesus, the more we inherit this life that Jesus gives us by being exposed to who he really is. I am of the opinion that the best way for us to see Jesus as he really is, is by reading the Bible and understanding how scripture points to Jesus. So we're going to use 14 different approaches to help us do this. At the end of this video, I'm going to share with you which of these techniques or approaches that I use to help me be prepared to share my faith with anyone that I come in contact with. Now, the first Bible study approach is what is called the verse by verse Bible study approach. It is an amazing approach, especially if you have the time to invest in any study of a passage. One of the things you can do in the verse by verse Bible study approach is choose a passage that you're interested in and look around that passage to see how verses connect. As you see the connection between the verses, you would study each one of those verses that is connected to the passage that you're actually concerned with to understand how the previous verse connects to the next verse and how that one verse connects to the following verse to get a very detailed and in-depth understanding of the passage. Now, one of the things that is interesting about this particular approach is that it does take a lot of time. If you don't have a lot of time, it may not be the best approach for you. But if you have the time to invest in a particular study, you're going to use the verse by verse Bible study approach and get all kinds of details. You're going to be highlighting different phrases and circling words, and you're going to be paying attention to repetition and idioms and different allegories and symbolism and references that connect verses to other verses. It is an incredible method to use, again, if you have the Bible study time in your schedule to put into this kind of approach. So if you're looking for a detailed approach, the verse by verse approach is by far one of the best, if not the best approach to use in understanding a passage. Now, if you're looking for a more general and a broader understanding of a passage, then the second approach, which is the chapter study, is the best approach for you to use. In the chapter study, you're focusing on entire chapters or you're looking at certain sections of the Bible. And this is very helpful if you don't have as much time, but you want to get a very good understanding of a particular passage. Then you would use the chapter approach to understand how a chapter connects to one chapter and how the flow of the narrative is considered or should I say maintained throughout the book that you're studying. I like to use chapter studies whenever I'm uh, studying for small groups or when I'm sharing in a small group, when we're trying to study a particular section of scripture or a narrative or even a genre of scripture. I like to use a chapter approach because we don't have necessarily the time to get into the weeds, but we do want to get an overall understanding of a particular idea that is in scripture that is poised or situated in a particular chapter or 
or even within a particular particular section of a book of the Bible. So if you're looking for that broader approach, then the chapter study method or approach is very, very good for you. And it gives you the opportunity to get a good understanding of any passage. Now, the third Bible study approach is the topical study approach. It's very helpful and very good whenever you're looking at certain topics within the Bible. Some people refer to this method, the topical Bible study method, as the deductive Bible study method. It is where you take different ideas or topics in the Bible and then you try to find different passages that uh, speak on that particular topic. So, for instance, if you're talking on forgiveness or you want to study peacefulness, if you want to study holiness, if you want to study uh, kindness, you would look through the Bible and see where the word kindness or where the topic kindness is actually discussed. And then you will do an overall study of all of those passages to see how the Bible as a whole talks about the topic of kindness. Well, this is very helpful whenever you're looking at different topics or you're studying the Bible. One thing I would caution you on is making sure whenever you're looking at a topic that your topic of consideration is contextually being represented in the Bible in the way that you're trying to study it. And in other words, you don't want to take a subject or a word even like kindness and find in the Bible just to find that it's not trying to portray a point about kindness that would be relevant to your study. You want to do some work to see how can you understand the context of how this word is being used in the Bible in order to see how it fits in your broader study. And again, this is one of the uh, Bible study methods that doesn't really take a lot of time, but it does take a little bit of effort to make sure we're not embellishing on a passage or am exploiting a passage to speak on a subject that the Bible is not really concerned with. So it's very good, it's very useful when you're trying to study topics. However, it does require us to be a little bit responsible and diligent in our studies to make sure we're not embellishing on a text. The fourth approach is the character study Bible. Now, when we're talking about the character study Bible approach, it is when we're looking at certain characteristics like uh, joyfulness, holiness, uh, righteousness. We're looking at these different characteristics that will help us understand what the Bible has to say about character. Now, this is helpful whenever you're trying to focus on spiritual formation. When I want to study about being more honest, then I look up the, the characteristic of honesty. You may be wondering what the Bible has to say about being faithful or being trustworthy or being honest. These are things that you want to put into a search engine that will help you understand all the verses that speak on this one characteristic. And this is very helpful whenever you're trying to work on spiritual formation, you're trying to figure out what are some of the attributes that I should have as a believer. Character studies are incredibly helpful. They don't take a lot of time, but it gives you an example of how this character is represented in human beings in the Bible that will help you understand what your ability is and what your responsibility is as a follower of Jesus Christ. I really, really suggest participating in character studies as often as possible. Find those virtues that are necessary for a Christian to walk in this life as a, a disciple and as a faithful you know, steward of Jesus Christ. These are very important, and I would suggest that you at least maybe once or twice a year do a good character study of things that you'd like to see in yourself because you see them in the most faithful characters of the Bible. The fifth Bible study approach is what is called the book Bible study approach. It is where you study an entire book of the Bible. I often do these a lot. I lead these studies a lot. I, we, we're currently doing one in the book of Revelation. This is a very, very good way of understanding how one book is outlining various ideas and understanding what is the perspective of the viewpoint of the writer as they're writing in this one book. This approach allows you to take a book out of 66 books or whatever your uh, uh, canonical number is, and it allows you to see how this one book fits in the overall study or the overall narrative of the Bible. It's a, a fascinating thing. So, for instance, if you're talking about studying the book of Romans, you're able to take that book out of the New Testament and say, what is the message that Paul is giving to the church in Rome and how does he deliver this message? How does it fit within the broader biblical narrative. You're able to concentrate on that book and get a sort of a bird's eye view of how that book is transforming a particular community 
or the recipients of that particular letter or writing. It's an incredible way of studying. And sometimes it can be done in a day. Sometimes it can be done in a year. Sometimes it takes longer than that. But the joy is the ability and the opportunity to focus in in a very, very narrow way on that particular book of the Bible and how it is being represented in a collection of other writings. The sixth Bible study approach is what is called the word study. It's one of my favorites, and it gives you an opportunity to study a particular word in the Bible in order to see how that word is used in different ways throughout the biblical narrative. Now, here's a very good technique you can use when uh, using the uh, word study approach. Whenever you're looking at a word in the Bible, rather than looking up that word in English, look up that word in its original language. If you're in the Old Testament, it's Hebrew or sometimes Aramaic. If you're looking in the New Testament, it's Greek. And you will find that the Greek or Hebrew word in its original language or original manuscripts are represented in unique forms that are not always viewable or discernible whenever you're reading in an English translation. One of the greatest surprises that I found in using the word study uh, approach is that sometimes when I'm looking at an English word, it's not actually what I thought that word means when I look at it in the Hebrew or Greek. So you want to find out how these words are represented in this original language. And again, this is one of those Bible study approaches that takes some time. I mean, I can spend literally a, an entire day doing a word study before I even get to a passage. I can just go through a word and I can look at all these different uh, lexicons and Bible dictionaries uh, that will help me understand how this word was used in its original time and how are these words represented in different passages of scripture. And, and it, it just goes into this very long process that is exciting and it is informative and it is something that you can use to overall to understand rather the the passage that you are considering with this word with this word's presence one of the things i did early on when i first started studying the bible was i would go through books of the bible and i would literally write the hebrew and greek dictionary meaning beside every single word in books of the bible i did this for several bible books of the bible where i would just literally go and write the definition in Hebrew or Greek, whatever the language was for that particular passage, next to the word that, that is English, and understand how the Hebrew and Greek writers were processing these terms. And what I found is, man, the Bible just becomes alive when you understand the Bible in its original language. So word studies are incredibly helpful. And all you would need is a Bible, a Bible dictionary, and the time. If you can get those three things, you are going to have a lot of fun and you're going to learn a lot about the Bible. It kind of goes hand in hand with the verse by verse. Sometimes that's very good to use with the verse by verse approach. But I would encourage you that if you have the time, please take a chance at reading uh, and studying using the word study approach. The seventh Bible study approach is the devotional Bible study method. It's whenever you're looking at smaller portions of the Bible and your real aim is to understand how that passage is speaking to you practically or in principle. Sometimes this just requires waking up in the morning and looking at a quick verse and then maybe meditating and drawing a line between what is said in that verse and what is something that inspires you or encourages you or something that you can reflect on as you go throughout the day. This doesn't take a lot of time, but it is very, very good to use. And I often like to use this approach early in the morning before I get my day started. I'll read just a couple of verses and then I will just meditate on that. And that kind of sets the tone for me as I begin my day. So the devotional Bible study method is very helpful. It's a way to engage scripture every day if you're short on time. So this approach is very helpful if you're trying to develop a habit of studying the Bible. Start with the devotional study approach and that'll really to help you cultivate a habit of reading and studying the Bible every single day. The eighth Bible study approach is the comparative Bible study approach. This is where you're comparing different translations to find a deeper meaning and an understanding of any typical text. I normally use the comparative Bible study approach every single week where I'm comparing the amplified version, the English standard version, the New Living Translation, the King James Version, the um, 
Young's literal translation. I have several different versions that I include. I even include the Message Bible. And I'm trying to figure out how all of these different translations are portraying this one text. And what I generally find out is that on the more literal side of the translations, I get more of an understanding of the literal Hebrew and Greek. But then on the more uh, paragraphical uh, Bible study translations, I get more of a modern understanding of how this passage, which was given in this particular time, may help us understand a particular truth about Jesus in this particular time that we're living in today. So understanding the different nuances that a language can bring to a text is very helpful, and you want to engage in a comparative Bible study in order to see that in all of its beauty. So pick your favorite Bible translations and find out how the Bible can come alive to you by participating in a comparative study. The ninth Bible study method is the inductive Bible study method. So if the deductive or topical Bible study method that we uh, talked about earlier is about picking topics, then the inductive Bible study method or approach is about focusing on a text and trying to discern what that text is plainly saying to you as you read it. Now, there are a few things you have to do. You have to really, really observe that text, interpret that text, and then move forward to creating an application of that text. But the primary purpose of inductive Bible study is to look at the passage and say, what is this passage saying to the original audience and how does that relate to something that I am dealing with in my current time? This is a powerful way of studying the Bible. And I think personally, it's one of the best ways to study the Bible. And you will find that this discipline that you're using will help you not only uh, understand absolute truth, that is what the Bible is absolutely saying for all people in all times, but it will help you see how that absolute truth can lead to a very reliable principle and application of scripture. Now we're talking about inductive Bible study. One of the keys to doing this right is having discipline. When you're participating in inductive Bible study, what you have to be able to do is hold the discipline of focusing intently on what the author is saying to the original audience long enough for you to discern how that actually impacts your life. The moment you reverse the order, that is you put your application before understanding the passage, you're no longer participating in inductive Bible study, and you're no longer going to get that absolute truth that leads to the principle that is reliable. And many times, this is the reason why passages are exploited and embellished, because we're in too much of a hurry to try to figure out what is the Bible saying to us, that we don't take the time to understand and establish what the text is saying to the original audience. So inductive Bible study is an incredible method, but it requires the ultimate discipline in order to get what is intended out of this Bible study approach. The 10th Bible study approach is the journaling or reflective Bible study approach. In the journaling or reflective Bible study approach, you are taking notes for the purpose of reflection. Sometimes you're writing these notes in a notebook that you can go back to and reflect upon, or you're writing them literally in your Bible where you're making tabs or you're, you know, you're putting um, markers or, you know, you're, you're kind of just marking your Bible up in an effort to really, really, you know, show what you're learning in any given passage. So I typically write in my Bible and I put tabs there and I have paper clips and all sorts of things that are helpful for me to reflect upon at some later date. The point is to look at a passage and see how that passage is somehow speaking to you in that moment. And it's very helpful for me because I may not necessarily go back and read all of these notes but one thing happens to me whenever I write something down, it sticks in my brain as if I, you know, I can never forget it. And the second thing is when I go through the Bible that I've marked up, there's something about that experience of writing in my Bible or writing in my notebook. I don't necessarily have to read it. I can just look at it and some sort of nostalgic experience happens where I'm able to recall that experience or that moment in, in that particular time where I wrote that passage and how that passage speaks to me even by simply just looking at the fact that I wrote in my Bible at that particular point. It's kind of like a trigger, if you will, that sets off every time I look at these notes that I have in my Bible. So it's very helpful whenever you're trying to uh, form a practice of just meditating on scripture 
thinking through scripture and then, you know, putting that to paper, committing it to some sort of consciousness or memory bank in your head that will allow you to grow even in your faith just by the simple practice of spending time with your Bible. So the journaling is very good. It's one of the more popular trends right now. So there are all sorts of creative ways you can do this. And I would encourage you to kind of look on Google or YouTube to see the different ways that you can create a journaling Bible experience. It's very incredible. And I recommend it for anyone. The 11th Bible study approach is what is called the historical and cultural Bible study approach. It's whenever you're placing special emphasis and soul emphasis on understanding what's happening in the time and in the cultural context of the particular passage. This is a very uh, helpful, very incredible Bible study method. It's not always the most popular because, again, our aim of studying the Bible is not necessarily to, you know, focus in just on facts, but it's, it's to gain some sort of application. So typically many people don't see the value in this, but I can tell you historical and cultural Bible study is one of the most beautiful ways to understand why the passage is absolute and how it is to be uh, considered true throughout all ages. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about this approach. When God decided to write whatever passage you're, you're, you're studying, he wrote it in a time in history that was relevant and particular to the point that he was trying to make. And because of how that time in history and the point that God is trying to make is so well fitted for each other, it is important that we understand the historical and the cultural background to every single passage. You see, God intended to write during that moment because he had a special reason. There's something about that moment in history that was useful to the point that God is trying to make to the world. And I kind of see historical and cultural Bible study as being incredibly uh, relevant and helpful in inductive Bible study, because you really can't do inductive Bible study unless you're doing historical and cultural Bible study as well. So many people will go for the inductive study because they are trying to have a more well-rounded experience. They're trying to study the context so that they can draw the bridge that will get them to the principle and the application. But then some people just like the, you know, kind of geek out and nerd out like I do on historical and cultural cultural uh, uh, points of a particular passage just because of the factuality of it. It's just a great thing to know. And I think this is something that we should kind of engage in. And uh, you will find it fascinating and quite interesting to see how the world existed before we ever got here and how God used that moment to portray a certain truth. The 12th Bible study method is what is called the biographical study. And the biographical study is very important and very helpful when you're trying to understand certain characters of the Bible. So earlier we talked about the character Bible study method where we're focusing on the characteristics of individuals who are in the Bible. But when you're talking about a biographical Bible study, you're focusing on human beings in the Bible. You may do a biographical study of King David. You may do a biographical study of Joseph, the son of Jacob. You may do a biographical study on all the women in the Bible and see how all of those different women had a different role and a different significance in the overall narrative. Biographical studies are useful in highlighting individuals to understand all that we can about that individual and the role that they play in scripture. And it's very, it's very intriguing. It's very intriguing to see how different individuals are, yet how useful they are to the biblical narrative and how their life contributes to the point in the message that God is trying to share about Jesus Christ. So biographical studies are endless. You can do this forever. And it doesn't take a lot of time. It can, depending on who the character is, obviously. But you can start with some of the most unknown characters and find out just how special they are and how much history has to say about their life and what they did in the world. One of the things I found about biographical studies is it helps us understand just how human the people in the Bible were. And sometimes it's a good dose of reality to find out that they were not superhumans. They were not holy rollers, as we sometimes call <laughs> as we sometimes called them. They were simple human beings who had simple lives, just like all of us. Yet God used them to make a very great point about who he is and what his purpose is in the world. And it's worth entertaining. It's worth studying and understanding. 
The 13th Bible study approach that you can use is the narrative Bible study approach. This approach is very helpful whenever you're trying to study the Bible as a narrative. And one of the ways that you can embrace this Bible study approach is by using what is called the chronological Bible reading plan. One of the things that is so amazing about the chronological Bible reading plan is that you find out that the canonical Bible reading plan is not actually the way the biblical events happened in history. So when you're reading canonically, meaning from Genesis to Revelation, as it appears in the front of your Bible, that's not actually the way things happened in history. So in order for you to have a narrative understanding of the Bible, you want to have a chronological reading plan that allows you to see how all of these different events in the Bible actually happened in history so that you can see the Bible as a story rather than an encyclopedia or maybe even some sort of, you know, collaboration of information. It is a story. It is a, a, a book of events that happen over a period of time. And so you might find in narrative reading that you may be studying in the book of Chronicles, but then you have to jump over to the book of Isaiah because Isaiah is prophesying during the periods that are being spoken about in the uh, book of Chronicles. Or you may find that in the book of Acts, you may have to jump over to a letter that was written by Paul because in the book of Acts are events that happened um, in a particular period of time. And Paul is writing during these events to different churches that he's, a, that he's planning. So the narrative Bible study is incredibly helpful because it helps us see why we need Jesus. And it helps us see how the events in history led up to the coming of Jesus Christ and why those events made his coming necessary. So I always champion the narrative Bible study approach because it is helpful in understanding why we have a Bible and what the Bible is actually trying to say to us. Lastly, there is what is called the meditative Bible study approach. And in this approach or this study method, what you're doing is you're taking a single verse or passage and you're just reading that passage and you're just thinking about it deeply. The meditative Bible study approach is very similar to the devotional Bible study approach. But in the meditative Bible approach, you're not necessarily trying to draw a application, even though you probably will. What you're more considering in this approach is how this passage can be contemplated in my life and in my mind. You're sitting here and you're thinking through the meaning of that text, and then you're drawing the line from that deep meditative moment to life and implications that can be found in your life. It's an incredible Bible study method that allows you to just think on a passage, how good it is for you and what it means to you in your life, which is a bit more different than, um, the devotional Bible study method that is somewhat uh, inspirational even. It is, is, it is meant to be an encouragement. This is meant to be meditative. You're thinking about this and you're putting this in your life and intentionally thinking through how this actually impacts all walks of your life, if you will. A lot more intentionality there. It's not always a quick process. It can be, but it's not always very quick. Sometimes it takes you a little time to really ingest all of that information and really take it to heart as it is intended to be. If you're wishing to develop a habit of studying the Bible, the meditative Bible study method is just as helpful as the devotional Bible study method. Now, out of all of these Bible study methods, there are five methods I like to use on a consistent basis. It's the verse by verse study Bible approach, the word study Bible approach, the inductive study Bible approach, the historical cultural Bible study approach, and lastly, the narrative Bible study approach. Every single year I participate in a narrative reading of the Bible by using a chronological reading plan. I mark my Bibles up. I use word studies to understand unique words that may pop out. I study the history and context on a weekly basis of any given um, uh, any given passage that may be in my heart or maybe I'm preparing for for study. Um, I love inductive Bible study because I feel you have to draw that line from the text to the common day and you have to do that by really thinking about how the passage itself is bearing out its own interpretation. Um, I love word studies. And I love verse by verse studies. I hardly ever go to a passage, pick it out and then just, you know, start talking about it or using it. Most times when I use one passage, even like I did today, I'm already aware of how other verses around that particular verse informs my understanding of the verse that I'm using. So it takes a lot of time. But listen, 
whenever we're here on this earth trying to make it through and trying to journey through this life called faith, we have nothing but time. We are in no rush, okay? Except whenever you have to get out and take your kids to school or get to work. But the, the point is, we can make time for these Bible study uh, methods. And, and whenever we're in different circumstances, we can use one of the less time-consuming methods. The idea is, as we read in John chapter 5, verse 39, how can we see Jesus in every text? And as long as we're doing that, we're doing our job every time we pick up this text to read it and understand it. So friends, we've gone over 14 Bible study methods that you can use and incorporate in your life. I would encourage you to pick one of these methods or do as I do, use several of them in an instance or over a short period of time to understand what the passage that you're reading is actually saying. Find which Bible study method is appropriate for the purpose that you're using it for and you will be just fine. So thank you so much for taking the moment to listen and check out this video. Please support. A lot of time goes into creating these videos, a lot of hours, a lot of thinking and planning and processing. So please just support by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It's really gonna help us as we strive to reach 1 million subscribers in just one year. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for viewing. And until next time, God bless.